Hello, everyone, and welcome to Meow Mix, the Carolina Panthers podcast. My name is Steven. My name is Jerry. And we are here to discuss the latest Carolina Panthers defeat, uh, 29-21 to the Falcons at home. Yep. Uh, Panthers moved to 5-8, and eight, would have been right in the playoff picture. Now the Falcons moved to 6-7. and seven. They're basically tied for that final yep. wild card spot, which the Panthers could have been. Uh, but another game, as you said, Jerry, right before we start recording, missed opportunities. That seems to be Matt Rule's tagline. Yeah. Uh, in I fact, think I was, I was going to tweet out a preview of Matt Rule's press conference. Missed opportunities. Didn't execute. Thought we did okay otherwise. <laughs> like, that's, you know, just put it on repeat. That's what yeah, he says every week. I think he should really be worried. I think this is one of the games that you had to win if you're Matt Rule to keep the naysayers, keep the hot coaching seat off you. I think this mm-hmm. game in New Orleans, if you won those two games, you can go, you know, four or two in the division, you know, a couple games over what you did last year, and you can say, mm-hmm. hey, look, the quarterback situation, you know, we got rid of Brady. But you know what? This loss is bad. This pass is, loss is really bad. Atlanta's not a good team, and you just lost to a rookie head coach, and your pass rush did nothing. Just your defense laid over again. I mean, what are you hanging your hat on if you're Matt Rule? As yeah. a Panther fan, nothing. I, I'm, I'm hanging my hat on nothing. Uh, what have we seen this season that is better than what we saw last season? Now, the defense over the course of the whole season was better, has been better, but over the last few games has not been. Yeah. They, they have regressed for sure. Whereas mm-hmm. last year they were improving at yeah. the end of the season. They were looking a lot better. Uh, you know, they may end up being basically the same as they were last season, just with the dip from the, at the end of the season now. Um, but offensively, uh, certainly way regressed from last season. Yeah. I will say though, I did think the play calling was better. It was just some of the execution. I felt that, Robbie Anderson was getting open deep a little bit more, even before the, you know, last PJ Walker drive. I felt that he was getting open a little bit deeper. The quick passes helped that offensive line to DJ Moore. And it just seemed like it had a little bit of rhythm compared to what Brady's offense did. That being said, you still only scored 21 points. You still coughed the ball up three times. I mean, you're going to lose a game. Yeah, I mean, I honestly didn't see a ton different with the play calling. Um, you know, they they still threw behind the line of scrimmage on third downs. Yep. They still um, called predictable plays on first downs. They, you know, that, that towards the end of the game, the play calling was atrocious. Oh, yeah. Throwing Matt, P.J. Walker out there, and that was – I know he scored that one hey, touchdown. Hey, P.J. Walker <laughs> looked a lot better, you know, on that last drive than I think Cam would have. But, yeah, I mean, I I, I didn't like putting P.J. out there. And uh, he, th- he, he, did, he did the same but, thing he always does. He gets yeah. under pressure, and he, th- he just lobs it up. He almost had another interception on mm-hmm. the drive. He scored a touchdown. He just yeah. flopped it, and it, luckily it hit the ground before a guy could get underneath it. P.J. Yeah, Walker hey, does not need to be out there. We've been we've said it we've been saying this since PJ, you know we liked the PJ signing as like a third mm-hmm. quarterback type of guy, practice squad type of guy. But now he's been like the main backup for two years, and he has played. He started several games. Yeah, he's not good. PJ Walker's not good. Um, Cam Newton, I, I don't think is very good either at this no. point in his career. Um, Cam had you know a decent rushing game, but. Yeah, again, I, there were some play calls towards the end that didn't put him in very good position, didn't put the Panthers in very good position. Uh, I thought Cam made some nice throws today. I thought he also made some terrible throws today. Yeah. I, and that's the Cam Newton experience in 2021, uh, unfortunately. Yeah, I mean, that's uh, – Cam Newton honestly kind of cost this game. His two turnovers flipped the script pick and six. gave it yeah. f- pick six – and the other one went for a, a touchdown. Fumble. That's that's a four, fumble. F- 14 points that you spotted the Falcons. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. Yeah, it, I mean, um, we'll get into the plays here in a minute, but uh, 
26 rushes to 35 passes. Uh, to me, it's just same old, same old. All right, let's get into our key plays here at the game. Um, I'll kick us off, Jerry. Uh, this one's in the second quarter, third and six at the Atlanta 36. Game is tied. Uh, and this We you know talked about this just a minute ago. Cam Newton, short pass intended for Abdullah, intercepted, uh, takes it 66 yards back to the house. And that was the last time the Panthers were close in this game, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, the, that pass, I thought Cam should have thrown it half a second earlier. Um, but turns out it was, it was just a bad decision, honestly. It, it was a bad ball. decision. We are in field goal range, driving the ball. If you throw an incompletion there, you don't make this, you go up 10-7, or at least a mm-hmm. chance. Zane Gonzalez, I feel like, could hit that because he's been <clears throat> very money this year. But he, that's just uh, a, a bad decision, bad play, yeah. completely flipped the script of this game. You no longer are winning or at least tied. You're now trailing and you're going to play catch up. And that does not bode well for what this Panther offense wants to do. Now, yeah. go ahead. Not not built to come from behind this Panthers team. <laughs> no. Uh, now we're going to jump into the third quarter, second key play of the game, second and third, Atlanta 47, Carolina 14, Atlanta 20. Cam Newton fumbles the ball and recovered by Atlanta. He should have just taken the sack. Taken the sack, I don't know. understand that little lob thing that he attempted to do. It was just... He, he got that, stepped on by Pat Elfline, who always sucks mm-hmm. and somehow helps suck mm-hmm. this on him. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. Yeah, bad play. Just a, a bad decision by Cam. Uh, I get it, trying to, make a, trying to make something happen. But when you're falling down, it just tuck that thing. Yeah. Play the next play the next play, you know. Yeah. Um you're you're handing it off to Chuba, who's a rookie who, you know, doesn't and that, first of all, wasn't playing a lot. Like I was really confused with the substitution for the running backs. I thought Chuba is one of those guys that needs like 15 carries to really you know, get into to get a rhythm. Going. But they were playing they were playing Amir Abdullah on first and second downs a lot. And I thought they should you know, use Amir Abdullah as your third down guy and let Chuba kind of carry that running offense. Either way, it, you know, it was Chuba on this one and he couldn't secure the ball, Cam, you know, ill-advised. But yeah, that, uh, that like you said, I think they, they went down and scored Yep. Uh, here, I guess, on this, uh, on that play. But yeah, uh, our final play here towards the end of the game, uh, third and thirteen. Carolina absolutely needs a stop here. Yeah, this is right after that fumble. The mm-hmm. defense on first and second down make them go negative three yards and then take it away. Uh, yeah, Matt Ryan short pass to Kyle Pitts uh, for 14 yards. And, you know, I would actually, Jerry, throw another one out here towards the end of the game, the Matt Ryan pass to Kyle Pitts. Yeah. It was a one-yard pass that went for like 23 yards. And that really sealed the game for the Falcons. Yeah. I don't know um, what Jermaine Carter was doing on that play. He yeah. was he was biting way too hard and not maintaining yeah. contain, which... I mean, Jermaine Carter has not been good this year, unfortunately. No. Um, but yeah, I mean, you could basically throw those two, those two third and longs to Kyle Pitts together uh, because those were killers. Yeah. And that's, that's basically your ball game. Panthers couldn't really get off the field on third down. Uh, I think the Falcons were... Seven of fourteen on third yeah. down, two of two on fourth down. So, you know, nine of sixteen overall there. Um, that's tough. The Panthers four and eleven or four four eleven on third down, one for three on fourth down, and and they started going for four going for the fourth downs pretty early in that fourth quarter, which I was okay with honestly. Yeah, you, you um, have to. I, You're I, two I possessions do. down. I do want to talk real quick about the decision that Matt Rule was going to go for two. Uh when they got to 20 points Mm -hmm. and they were down 29 to 14 and PJ drives down, they score and they line up for two and the announcers are going crazy. Why are they going for two now? Blah, blah, blah. You know, it doesn't matter. You got to go for two at some point. You either go for two there or you go for two on the next one. I kind of liked going for two there. I did too. Because that gives you the option. If you want to go for two 
you know, say you get the ball back, you could go for two to win the game. Or you know, if, if you don't get clicking, it, if you don't get it, you're still two mm-hmm. possessions down. You may have to go right. ahead and lean into that onside kick. Right. I I, yep. I disagreed with commentators on that. I agree with yeah. going for it on two there. Yeah, I, I thought it was a, a, a good idea. You would just drove down the field and scored. You've got a little bit of momentum. You mm-hmm. know, just go ahead and go for the two there. Try to get it. Then you've really got the momentum because th- then you're one score down. Uh, your defense maybe plays a little harder. I mean, it's it's – you know, you were one score down anyway, but yeah, I, I thought I, t- I thought they made way too big of a deal about that. I didn't think it was a bad idea. I absolutely agree with you because when they they said that, I was thinking actually it gives you a little bit more wiggle room to go for two now right. instead of later. So yeah, because right, if you don't get it, then just onside kick. Mm-hmm. You know, then you know that you're basically your two possessions, Dan. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I never liked that theory of always waiting to go for two. I'm like, you're going to have to go for two now or then. So yeah, at least and, now and you get know. the ball back anyway. You yeah. Know? So, <laughs> so whatever, but yeah. All right. We had zero sex this game. Zero. Yeah. Atlanta and the Carolina have the one and two of the worst offensive lines in this game. And mm-hmm. Brian Burns, Hassan Reddick, all those guys were non-existent. Where are you guys at? I mean, that I don't know. It, it, it obviously, usually you get there with the R4, but those guys, man, come on. Get get after it. Where are you? You're the lynch pit of the defense. Yeah, and uh, they got pressure a few times, but it seemed like it was always on a blitz. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they just, in my opinion, didn't blitz enough. Uh a couple of hits on Matt Ryan. I think they got a BS roughing the passer call that, yeah, you know, certainly shouldn't have been a roughing the passer call. Uh, it was a hard hit, but it was, you know, split. He just had thrown the ball. Like it but, was not, I it believe wasn't he was to the head or anything. I believe he got hit while he still had the ball. It just came out right as he got yeah. hit. Yeah. Uh, a terrible, terrible call. But the NFL but, refs completely suck this year. All around. I mean, there's a couple calls that, Atlanta should have got two. Just the referees suck this year. Yeah, certainly not not the reason we lost the game. Please no. don't think that we're saying that, but um, it is frustrating to watch sometimes. But yeah, no sacks for the Panthers. I think I think I heard the the commentators say the Pan- the Falcons had given up five sacks their previous game. Um, Panthers mm-hmm. Panthers just haven't been getting a lot of sacks since the first few weeks of the season. Like they start out gangbusters. On offense and defense, those first three games of the season, it's just been a different team since then. It really has. Yeah. Yes, it has. And it's been a horrible to watch. It's yeah. just so frustrating to watch. But the good news is New Orleans won, Atlanta won. Now we're in the driver. Let's lose out. Let's start. I mean, I hate saying it like that. I know a lot of Panther fans are, you're not a Panther fan. I want a better draft position because we can drop back. We can maybe draft a left tackle, maybe draft a quarterback. That's what I'm just trying to think of the positives coming from this game. In the, the driver's seat. Yeah, for, I mean. You know, the last place in the division. And, hey, you're going to get your wish because, you know, three of the next four games are yeah. really tough games against good teams. And then you've also got the Saints in there who, by the way, are have a better record than we do. Mm-hmm. You know, even, even with uh, their quarterback struggles. Um, but, yeah, I mean. This was this was a tough one to watch, and you know I had tickets to this game. We talked about it on our, on our last podcast. I was going to go to this game. Unfortunately, my one of my kids got really sick and um, didn't work out. But I'm glad I didn't go, honestly, because it would be you know, diff- difficult to watch this game. Yeah, that's a that's. I don't want to support this team financially you know financially outside of what we're doing you know the podcasts and of course i have you know t-shirts all over the place and and i'll continue to watch the games but in terms of going and paying 40 dollars for parking and buying you know things at the stadium i mean i, I just why at yeah i point, mean what why? what is the product giving you that right I, I don't know. I mean, really, I, I agree with you on that certain extent. It's it's so frustrating to watch this team. And that's why I said this game could be not the nail in the coffin for Matt Rule, but this could mm-hmm. really be sh- 
pushing that door shut. Because this and New Orleans were the games I felt that Matt Rule needed to win to really solidify him being here next year. They were certainly the most winnable games yeah. of our last five. Uh, you know, we still have New Orleans and Buffalo hasn't been unbeatable this year, but that game's in Buffalo. That's 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 tough. And neither and Tampa Bay is. Yeah, I mean. Right. But the Bucks, you know, again, they're divisional games. They're always, you know, tough and close. And uh, I, I think uh, in our pre uh, prediction show earlier this season, I think I chose the Panthers to go two and four in the division. It looks like that's quite possible, but. Um, yeah, I mean, this is, this is a tough one. And now we've got that stretch of the games that we were dreading. Yep. You know, where it's hard to see more than one win. And at this point, it's hard to even see that. Yeah. I, I, if you're really hoping for wins, I think you're looking to the New Orleans game and maybe that last Tampa Bay game, if they're already wrapped up seed wise. I mean, I, I think this team has potential. I think that's why I predicted them, you know, 10 wins at the beginning. There's a lot of mm-hmm. potential on this team. I just oh, yeah. don't see this coaching staff getting the potential out of this team. And Cam Irving, can you not get injured on a on a game, seriously, that you play? The offensive line, <laughs> the decisions that are being made with who to play, mm-hmm. where... Dennis Daly, number one, should not be on this team. Uh, Cam Irving is barely on the team. He, he barely plays. Dennis Daly is just, just turnstile at left tackle. Um, why are they not giving Christensen a shot at left tackle? Like, I don't think he played a single snap there, and there were injuries. And Dennis Daly was highly ineffective when he was out there. I don't get you it. wonder if it's, is it ego from Matt Rule? You know, I'm the one that brought Cam Irving and I chose this guy. I, I'm going to make sure that he's playing out there so he proves me right. We, we you know, and, the, and then he's talked about Christensen at guard so much. You know, I'm going to make Christensen into a good guard so everybody shuts up about that. You know, just play them. You know, it's his natural position is left tackle. He yeah. played extremely effectively there in college. Yes, it was not against the best competition in the world, but he was elite. And, and here's the thing is if he doesn't hap- make it, there's so many guards in the NFL that were drafted as left tackles that just mm-hmm. couldn't make it. And then they kick inside and they were good. I think of Robert Gallery. I, that's probably like 15 years ago, but he was drafted by Oakland at the time. And to mm-hmm. be a big left tackle, top five pick, he did not pan out as a left tackle, but he came like a pro bowl guard. You can do that. Yeah. That's okay. You're not going to be crying spilt milk. If he doesn't pan out in a third Give him round a shot, pick. Though. Yeah. Give him a shot. Like he, you know, he did nothing but succeed in college and was part of the reason why Zach Wilson was the number two pick overall. I mean, he kept his blind side completely clear. Clean. And when he has played left tackle, you know, for more than a couple of downs a series or something, when he played that full game almost at left tackle a few weeks ago, he was one of the highest graded tackles yeah. on our team or uh, offensive lineman on our team for that game. So I would give him a shot. Like at this point, what do you have to lose? Because nobody that you're putting at left tackle is playing well. No, no one. And it's just so frustrating. But, again, there's been quite a things. I kind of want to discuss with you off the show about doing an off-season review. Like, we just mentioned Cam Irving and stuff. Mm-hmm. I was thinking about it. everyone we signed and we were kind of had high hopes on has sucked. All Denzel per- Perryman. Big names, yeah. Denzel Perryman. Oh, yeah. Denzel Perryman yeah. is playing very well. He's just not on, he's just not on exactly. the Exactly. They let him go. <laughs> I mean, Cam Irving, Pat yeah. Elfline, suck. Who else yeah. do we? Oh, AJ well, Bouye. We knew they were going to suck. AJ, AJ Bouye. Bouye has been okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah, he's been okay. Rashawn but Melvin yeah, had mean, to come in for C.J. Henderson because C.J. Henderson yeah. got his lunch money taken in that first drive by Russell Gage. Yep, C.J. Henderson definitely has been a bust so far. Um, I mean, Daquan Jones has played well. He yeah. was a guy that we were excited about coming in. Um 
Gilmore has played well when he's been in there, but he doesn't seem to be out there that much. I feel like he was out there a good bit today compared to previous games. I, I, I want to like... see the snap count. I mean, I, they said he was going to be out there at least 50% of the snap count today, so I hope that he was out there for that. And he made some plays when he was out there, but um, yeah, Henderson did not look good today. Um, I don't know, man. I, I, I'd be fine with that, though, just kind of going back and looking through the signings and the drafts uh, mm-hmm. as well and just kind of grading them out uh, about how, how well they did. I think that's a good idea. Uh, all right, you want to look at some statistics here? Uh, before we look at statistics, one big thing I think about this game mm-hmm. is we had three dropped interceptions, and two mm-hmm. or three of those were in the first half. It was just so frustrating because if you would have gotten that those picks early, mm-hmm. I feel like this game had the snowball effect where you could have easily just kind of started making Atlanta doubt themselves slash give up and just yeah. run away with this game. But unfortunately... They just dropped them. Well, it kind of went the other way. Yeah. You know, Atlanta well, they, got their their turnovers, and they it was a snowball effect for them. Yeah, it was because you we dropped an interception, and they scored a touchdown on that drive. Yeah. I think we dropped two interceptions on one drive, and they scored the touchdown. It's just yeah. like, key plays like that suck. Like, yeah. missed opportunities. <laughs> 2021 yeah. Carolina Panthers tag. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's going to be on the inside of all of our jerseys. Missed opportunities <laughs> instead of keep counting. All right, well, let's just real quick go through some of these stats. Um, Cam was 15 of 23, 178, no touchdowns, one interception. Uh, PJ, 6 for 12, 75 yards, one touchdown, one interception. Pretty much all of his uh, positive plays came on that last drive. Uh, mm. He came in at the end of the – what was it? The end of the second quarter – yeah. And promptly threw an, a terrible interception. Horrible interception. Just threw it up there. Uh, awful I mean, that, decision. That would be like something I would do back there as a quarterback. Like, oh my God, I'm going to get hit by a <laughs> linebacker. Yeah, panicking. <laughs> Panic throw. Um, Cam Cam ran well. He's 10, 10 rushes, 47 yards, and uh, that first touchdown. Um, mm-hmm. You know, Cam, running Cam seems to be productive throwing cam not as much uh chuba 10 for 33 and a touchdown uh amir abdullah four for 16 and the pj two for negative five robbie anderson had his best game of the season statistically seven and pj walker tried to kill him yeah a couple throws pj did throw him a, a hospital ball uh seven receptions for 84 yards and a touchdown on 12 targets for robbie so welcome to the season robbie that was, uh, mm-hmm. you know, and, and that touchdown was a really nice catch. It was. You know, we've been no. ragging on Robbie hard for the drop passes, which he had a few of in this game. But that was a great catch. Yeah. Yeah. He went for that hospital ball, too. Otherwise, it would have been an interception. Yeah. I mean. Right. Yep. Yeah, he, he played a good game. Uh, DJ, six for 84. Yeah. Uh, Zilstra, four for 45. Tommy Tremble had uh, one really, really nice catch. Uh, and then he had another. Um, you know, just routine catch with two for 23 for him, a mere two for 17. Yeah. I uh, want and then quickly, Ian Thomas sucked. Go ahead. Yeah. DJ Moore had probably the best catch of the game, but it was mm-hmm. out of bounds because oh, yeah, DJ yeah, Walker. Oh, wow. But I felt like it went away from DJ Moore way too quick. I felt the first couple drives, they were, or first mm-hmm. three drives, they were targeting him nicely on quick, yeah. quick routes and stuff like that. And then they just went away. They just went away until. The third quarter. I didn't understand why they did that. Well, Jerry, <clears throat> you see, some teams in the NFL are able to make adjustments, right, mm-hmm. on defense. And I feel like Atlanta made an adjustment on defense to sort of help take away DJ Moore. And, uh, you know, being a Panthers fan, I can understand how you might be confused as to a, a team making adjustments uh, to improve <laughs> throughout the game because the Panthers don't do that. And yeah, we just try the same things over and over and over and over and over again on offense and defense. Uh, you know, Atlanta, they could run to the left every single time if they wanted to. Yeah. And they did. And the Panthers couldn't figure out how to stop it. No. And that what did that set up? That set up a beautiful, perfect uh, play action pass to Hayden Hurst to the right, wide open touchdown. I mean, you know, that's the type of 
things that setting up that run and, and being successful at doing something can do. Uh, Atlanta rushed for 128 yards in this game. What are they averaging? Like 88? Is that what we said at the in yeah, our preview I think show? So. Yeah. Um, one of the worst rushing teams in the league, but they did whatever they wanted against the Panthers. Um, all right. As we said, no sacks for the Panthers in this game. Uh, Jeremy Chin did lead the team in tackles with 13. Shaq Thompson had 11. Um, no interceptions, no fumble. Well, we did have a, a fumble recovery um, by, uh, was it Carter, right? Didn't he recover that fumble? Uh, the fumble um, recovery. Yeah, it was Jermaine Carter. Okay. Um, no field goals for Zane. Three for three on extra points. They didn't even uh, give him an attempt at a, a field goal. And then Lachlan Edwards, probably his worst game as a punter. Only two punts, but one of them was oh. terrible. Really went, bad. Uh, actually, the special teams overall not good in this game. Erickson kind of let a, a punt bounce, and it bounced well inside the five-yard line when he could have just fair caught it and saved 15 yards. The, the but, best special teams play was the uh, personal foul on them for hitting <laughs> <right>. Erickson. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. So for Atlanta, uh, Matt Ryan, 19-28, 190, and a touchdown. He didn't have to do much in this game. Nope. Nope. Um, but he was fairly effective. Cordell Patterson, uh, 16 carries for 58 yards, uh, also had two catches for one yards, and he didn't even play most of the fourth quarter or any of the fourth quarter, I don't think. Um, well, they realized that they could just line up bulk yeah. and let Mike Davis pound it up yeah. because that just seems to be the – why need to throw the ball? We have such a great pass defense, but it's not being tested because of the simple fact that teams realize – oh, we could just run on them, and there it's okay. Yep. Uh, Mike Davis, as you mentioned, 11 carries, 44 yards. And then uh, Quadre Allison, 5 for 23, Matt Ryan, 4 for 3. Uh, Russell Gage, four, only four receptions for 64 yards, but he had a couple of big ones early. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I, I do want to see more tape on Henderson and if he was able to adjust to take some of that gauge stuff away, he was bent for Rashawn half. Melvin, Melvin okay. in the second well, or third drive. There you go. All right. So for the rest <laughs> of the game, he, he wasn't in there. From, from my understanding, yes. Okay. I, well, he may have right. pl- that answers that. <laughs> he may have went to someone else, but yeah, I. They well, the good news is that there's not a lot of tape for me to watch. Then <laughs> that's the good news. Uh, Kyle Pitts, five for 61, and a a couple of big third down receptions for him. Uh, As we discussed earlier, Mike Davis, five catches for 42 yards, and then there were a scattering of catches, uh, including Hayden Hurst, one for a touchdown. Uh, Let's see. Uh, For the defense there, a couple interceptions, A.J. Terrell and Michael Walker. uh, Alukun led there uh, in tackles with seven. And they had one sack. Dante Fowler got Cam. Yeah. Um, Where Cam Irving just kind of. Yeah, yeah. Oh, here you go. Here's Cam he Newton O-laid. on fourth down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, which, was, you know, there was another play on that same drive, like two plays prior. I think it was, it was the second down run where Cam caught the ball, turned, and Dante Fowler was just right yeah. there in his face. Yeah. And I guess they count that as a run play for cam and not a sack but it might as well have been because it was terrible it was a designed run but i mean there's nowhere to run when he's literally getting hit as soon as he (laughs) looks up right there in his face and then uh and then i saw cam irving like looking around like who it was you man you you were the (laughs) one that that did that (laughs) you're the one who actually connected with him and then went like this here you go what who was supposed to block him well, uh-huh. Maybe that's your problem because you're the one that's supposed to block him. Uh, Young Way Koo, three for three on field goals, and their their punter was fine. So, yeah, uh, that's the stats. I mean, you know, they uh, the Falcons had the ball for 35 minutes. Again, the Panthers can't stay on the field, can't get off the field on defense. You know, this is the story of the last 10 yep. weeks of the season. Um, let's see. Any any other stats that are worthy of mentioning? No, you mentioned third down. That was a big yeah. one. It just the the lack of quarterback pressure and lack of sacks just really on third down and long they were just picking them up because 
Matt Ryan had all day. And as much as I hate Matt Ryan, he's a good quarterback that if you give him time, he will find somebody. He won the MVP a couple years ago. You know, I mean, he's, he's still, he's not a bad quarterback. And and if you give him time, like you said, he's going to find people. And he did. Uh, Three turnovers by Carolina to one to Atlanta. I mean, that, as we, we kind of talked about that, I think is the biggest stat of the game because that's, you know, one of those interceptions was directly uh, points for Atlanta. Mm -hmm. And then the other, at least one of the other two led to points. So missed opportunities, Jerry didn't execute well. 2021 Pan- Carolina Panthers, bad coaching and missed opportunities. So you mentioned, you know, we talked about it a little bit before we started the show, but you also mentioned it a little bit during the show's Matt Rule. I um I still don't think he gets fired, but I am now completely on board with he should be fired. <laughs> because I- we're I, you know, we're not seeing any we're not seeing improvement this mm-hmm. year at all. And I don't see where it's going to come in the last four weeks. I don't either. I mean, like I said, I felt like the offense looked a little bit better today than they had in the past games. That's not saying much. They still only scored 21 points and did three turnovers. Yeah, they basically looked the same as they did against Washington, in my opinion. I mean... You know, Cam looked okay. Not great. Um, The running game was meh. A couple nice catches... 21 points and that's it. Yeah. I mean, certainly looked better than it did last week, but our week before last, uh, last week was by, but yeah, uh, I, I don't, I don't know what uh, this to me seems like a really long term fit, um, thing to fix. Like, I don't see just getting a couple of offensive linemen is going to fix this team, you know, next year. It's good. Quarterback situation is really, really bad yeah uh, cam newton is not the answer long term it, it, no th- this Which i team, think we all knew that this know? team needs a left tackle probably another guard maybe a center a quarterback uh, definitely a center because paradise is gone after this year yeah well elf line that's why they sit claim they oh, signed yeah. we um, don't like elf line no but <laughs> i'm just so a quarterback three offensive linemen a middle linebacker because I think Jermaine Carter is causing us a lot of problems mm-hmm. and probably another defensive tackle because Daquan Jones probably is gone. Yeah. He was only a one year signing. Yeah. I mean, it, it, yeah, it's too I, bad. They didn't keep Perryman. I think they had him for two years. I think they're paying him next year still. So, you know, even after that, that trade, but yeah. Um, I, I would say outside of Moten, the entire offensive line needs to be upgraded. I, I think I Christensen, don't. you leave. I, I I left him alone because I say you have him growing in. Maybe Deontay Brown, if maybe they give him a chance, they don't even let him play. As horrendous as this line is, it's not like he could do much worse. Yeah. Again, I don't know. I, I don't know if he's any good. We, we have no idea. We haven't seen him out there. Uh, Christensen, I was thinking, you know, uh, try him a left tackle. And if, that doesn't work out then you know who knows where he goes at that point but he hasn't been good at guard Mm -mm. he hasn't graded out well and and just watching him he hasn't played well there um so i don't know how comfortable i feel with him starting at guard next year but yeah i would say you know a quarterback most of the offensive line whether it's three or four um middle linebacker like you said maybe a safety i mean there's there's a lot of things the team needs. I, I was going to say, I think Burris has done actually well. As much as I knocked him and I didn't I want mm. him starting, I felt like he's played well. Um, yeah, but I don't think he's on the team next year, is he? Oh, I don't know. Um, I do think Jeremy Chin, maybe, maybe go ahead and slide Jeremy Chin back down. Slide him back down. Let him roam as that Joker type of linebacker safety hybrid yeah. and bring in another safety. Where I'd be he happy. was so productive last year, and maybe I hate saying it by Jim or uh, Jermaine Carter goes back to the bench. Yeah. Maybe Kenny Robinson can jump up. You know, he's played he's yeah. played some decent games. Sean Chandler seems to be struggling again. So, yeah, well, you know, Sean Chandler's on the team because he went to Temple. Temple, 
Uh, Bur- Burris is a free agent after this season. So, yeah, uh, lots of things to fix. And I think probably number one, Tepper, Coaching. Tepper's got a big decision. Yeah, he's got a big decision to make about rule. Yeah. I mean, it's easy and, for us to say, let's cut our losses. Of course. It's a lot, lot of money. And it's also, it's a lot of building. It's it's not a simple fix. There's a lot of coaches or teams that go through coaches every two, mm-hmm. three years. And teams that usually let coaches develop end up having a better coach. That being said, yeah. I feel like this team is regressing, not progressing. Right. So. Yeah, and that's the whole thing. Like, I, I don't want to be one of those teams Mm-mm. that cycles through head coaches and cycles through quarterbacks. It seems like we're already one of those teams that's cycling through quarterbacks, unfortunately. Yep. That's where we are right now. Um, you know, we've only had, what, four head coaches in the entire history of this franchise. Is that Capers, four? Seifert, Fox, Rivera. Okay, five now. Okay. With rule, five. I'm not counting interim head coaches. Um, yeah. So four other head coaches other than rule. You know, I was hoping that Rule would be another of the on the line of long head coaches that we've had that, you know, get better and get better. But I have no faith. I have no faith in him. I, I don't either. I I feel like I like I mentioned the way the season has gone, the way this team has continuously regressed in all phases and and the same issues pile up year last year and this year penalties, you know, bad offensive line, you know, defense can't get off the field on third down or stop the run. I mean, same issues over and over and over again. Yeah. What what are you fixing? What has Matt Rule in this era looked better than Ron Rivera's last year here? Can I ask you that? I haven't seen anything. I I I really didn't want them to fire Ron Rivera, but you know, uh, it felt like it was time for a change at that point. But you know, I mean, and like I said, like we said, the defense has been better. I mean, they invested so much in the defense; it almost had to be better. Mm-hmm. You know, if we're looking at what could happen in year three of Matt Rule, you can look at Cliff Kingsbury. You know, Cliff Kingsbury was five and ten his first season, five ten and one. Then he went eight and eight his second season, which I think is what we were hoping Matt Rule would do, would be improved by two or three games, three or four games in year two. And then year three now, he's 10 and two and the best team in the uh, NFC record wise. Yeah. So that's your benchmark, right? That's what we're hoping to see. But I would say if, if Matt Rule doesn't get fired in the offseason, I would place bets that he would be the first coach fired during the season next year. I could see that because 100%. if he doesn't improve quickly, I would say by you know mid mid the year, if they're two or three games under five hundred and looking as bad as they look now, that Tepper would go ahead and make the move uh, mid season, like he did with Rivera, like they did with Joe Brady. I think making the move early, like. Maybe not super early, but making the move mm-hmm. when you already know it's going to happen is fine. I mean, yeah. go ahead and make that move because yeah. the players know it. It, it. It's that, you know, everybody knows it. Don't drag mm-hmm. it out. Go ahead, start your coaching search. Yep. Yeah, let everybody go, you know, move on. They're pastures. Yeah. And he's got a golden parachute that's not going to harm <clears throat> him in any ways with that contract. No, I'm sure there'll be some buyout, you know, where he... he Maybe he doesn't get that whole thing. Maybe he does. I don't know. I mean, if he if he's got a job he wants to go to, I guess there would be a buyout. But if he gets fired, I guess it's all his. So I don't know, man. I mean, I hear Joe Brady is wanting to stay in the NFL. So good for him, I guess. But I mean, um, <laughs> I I guess that rule I could kind of be upset it didn't get fired just recently, so he could get one of the. Sweet gigs that just opened up, but I mean, mm. in college, but yeah. All right. Um, our predictions, we, we both predicted the Panthers would win, obviously. Um, I think my, my bold prediction was 100 rushing yards from Amir Abdullah, which certainly did not happen. Yeah. Um, I don't remember I, what yours was. Chuba Hubbard, 115 rushing yards. There yeah. you go. Yeah, he's just not getting the opportunities. Like 10 rushes. No. Nope. 
you know, this you're letting Cam run 10 times. I understand that. And Cam was productive when he ran. But I want to see what Chuba has. I want to see what Chuba is. I Matt Rule because wasn't I think coming opens, out of the draft. Like, why are yeah, you not? That, that opens up opportunities with CMC next season. Mm-hmm. Whether it's trading him or moving him to slot receiver or, you know, just running him five times a game and, and then re- putting him in that receiver role the majority of the game. Like it opens up a lot of, you know, a creative offensive coordinator should be looking at this team with like salivating because there's so many Weapons. options. Yeah, there's so many fun things that you could do with this team. I, I don't know why you don't. Well, when Christian McCaffrey, why you don't have a dual back uh, set up? You have yeah. your quarterback on one side, Chuba on the other, Christian McCaffrey on the other. You could do so many option type of things and even split either Chuba out or mm-hmm. Christian McCaffrey out to the slot. There's so many things. I mean, yeah. yes, Chuba doesn't have the best hands, but you can work on things like that. Just It, it just was uninspiring and... I mean, it continues to be uninspiring. Yeah, it's it's not fun to watch. I mean, yeah. Um, all right, heroes and zeros. Uh, do we want to go with our zeros first? I don't have a hero. I don't think anybody on this team really mm. kind of deserves a. I have a hero. I mean, I, you know, if I was going to give one, I would say Robbie Anderson, just because it's the <laughs> only time this season I was am able to do it, and I thought he made a really nice catch. In the end zone, he did break up that potential interception uh, with yeah. a poor pass by PJ. Um, but yeah, I can't think of anybody else that just had an outstanding game. And Chen had a lot of tackles, but Chen, you know, got kind of lost out in no man's land on one of those third yeah. down completions uh, to Kyle Pitts or first down completions to Kyle Pitts. Um, he was just sort of standing out there guarding no one. So I, you know, yeah, I guess well, let's say no, no heroes in this game. Uh, so who's your zero? I am going Cam Newton. I think his mm. two turnovers were so costly, costly in this game. He he couldn't make up for those two costly p- turnovers. I mean, yeah. one was a pick six, and it was a bad decision on him. That was the only turnover I thought Atlanta kind of earned. And mm. the other one was him just fumbling around the ball instead of. And then they drove the length of the field or the 50 yards and scored a touchdown. I mean, 14 yeah, point I, swing I, off his turnovers. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he, he certainly is well deserving of that. Um, I, you know, I think I'm going to go Cam Irving slash Dennis Daly, just left tackle in general. Oh, yeah. Bad, uh, bad, bad game from that position certainly contributed to some of cam's issues um pat elfline i mean you could really go offensive line <laughs> you know <laughs> pat elfline directly contributed to that fumble uh i don't know whose fault that was that was cam's fault or or elflines but again you bring in a, a quarterback midway through the season really on the back half of the season that's things like that are going to happen yeah he doesn't have the timing down he's not comfortable with the center he's you know it's just you got to expect it. And now we're 0 and 3 in Cam starts. Again, probably should have expected it. Yeah. It was so much that Arizona game really gave us false hope. Yeah, that was what a strange game. Looking yeah. back on the season like what is, what an odd game. But yeah. All right. We want to thank everyone for listening. If you like the show, please let your friends know. Please follow us on Twitter at Meow Makes Podcast. If you have any questions or comments, you can email us at mailbag at meowmakespodcast.com. If you leave us a five-star review with a comment on Apple Podcasts, we'll read it on the show. Please like and subscribe on YouTube. Uh, We'll be back uh, sometime next week to preview uh, Panthers visiting the Buffalo Bills. Hello, Sir Purr. Uh, (laughs) Until then, everybody stay safe out there and keep pounding.